To understand how we breathe using the lungs, we've got to have some understanding of pressure. Now, let's look at a simple example. Imagine a little food bag, the sort of thing you might pack your sandwiches in. Imagine that we pull on this in every direction. We know that it is then going to fill with air as a consequence. Now, what's happening? Well, we've increased the volume. And what this has done is it has decreased the pressure inside of the bag. Now, that decrease in pressure immediately balances itself out by filling the bag with air to then rebalance that pressure. Now, let's contrast this with a slightly different example. Remember, with this food bag example, an increase in volume will decrease the pressure inside. Now, let's look at a balloon. Now, with a balloon, we put air inside and the balloon will expand. An increase in pressure increases the volume. People often make the mistake of thinking that with your lungs, you force air inside and that makes your rib cage, your chest expand. And that's not true. Your lungs behave the same as the food bag example, that what we are doing is we are forcing it into a bigger shape and that forces the air to enter. Let's have a look at the structure of the lungs here. Now, first of all, we've got to think about the diaphragm. What will happen is the muscles of the diaphragm will contract and move down. Let's look a little bit more closely at what that is. This sheet of muscle will contract and that makes it move downwards. So this is going to help to increase the volume inside of the thoracic cavity. Next, let's think what's happening with the muscles that are attached to your rib cage. The external intercostal muscles are going to contract and this will pull your rib cage upwards and outwards. So altogether, these movements will create an increase in volume. An increase in volume decreases the pressure inside and just like the food bag example, this causes air to enter the lungs. By contrast, when you breathe outwards, the diaphragm will then relax, which allows it to move upwards. At the same time, the internal intercostal muscles will contract. At the same time, the external intercostal muscles will relax. And this forces the rib cage to move downwards and inwards. Altogether, there is now an increase in pressure which decreases the volume inside of the thoracic cavity. As a consequence, we are squeezing the volume smaller, we are going to force air outwards. Let's look at a possible exam question you could get on this. Which row describes the movement of the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm when we inhale a breath? Now, if you know which muscles are going to contract and relax at the right time, you should recognize that the answer is B. When we inhale a breath, the internal intercostal muscles relax, the external intercostal muscles contract, and the diaphragm will contract.